Ecclesiasticus 32 verse 7 Speak, young man, if there be need of thee, and yet scarcely when thou art asked twice. All right, first and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashim, Rakan Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect, man, you brothers out there doing this work in sincerity, you know. First in your lives, me freedom to do so, like the elder Malcolm always brings out. Because we definitely enter those times where it's a risk, you know, you're taking a risk, uh, you're making yourself, literally making yourself a living sacrifice, because death is around every corner. This being the, sh the valley of the shadow of death. But uh, something was just on my spirit, you know, I just want to briefly, you know, go into this as the scripture uh, says. Uh, let me read the next one. Let thy speech, verse 8, let thy speech be short, comprehending much and few words. Be as one that knoweth and yet hold of his tongue. You know, and um, there's a perfect example of this uh, in Job verses 30, uh, Job chapter 32 and chapter 33, you know. And I guess I'm going to title this lesson, We Can All Learn Something From One Another, you know, because, you know, um, sometimes we can get into this mindset of knowing so much and 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 um, being so established in the things that we've learned that we can kind of ignore the lessons that can be learned from from younger people from even like I'll give you a good example you know like uh you know like this video here you got the serious look just like y'all got the serious intense look because he's trying to you see this guy out right here right this guy that right here, you know, this but this video was posted, you know, a couple times, you know. Um, so basically, this guy he says a lot of things that line up perfectly with the scriptures, perfectly, you know. And um, but he, you know, he doesn't appear to be, you know, he he's not on the highways and byways. Why are you trying to figure it out? So lucky like he's not on the highways and byways. But as you can, but as you, if you watch this video, just type in Gadite Speaks Out on GMS Vent, you know, and I'm going to get to the point. If you watch this video, he's not, he's not in the, you know, in the truth. You know, he's not out there praising you how about shimmy, how shy, things of that nature. But nevertheless, he's speaking scripturally and, it, and it, enough for this brother to repost it on his channel. And numerous brothers have reposted this. This is a man of a low estate. But but listening to his his speech, uh, that's in the scriptures, you can learn something from it. You know, you can learn humility and certain things from this this man speaking. And so we have to remember that, you know, there are things that we can learn in everyday life, even from those people who are not a, a, in the truth. Now, take that with a grain of salt. Everything needs to be filtered through the scriptures. You don't just start learning something from somebody and get bugged out and start taking what they're do what they're saying and oh yeah, you know, and you know, all these weird ass doctrines is out here. But if the things that they are saying can be filtered scripturally, there's a lesson that can be learned from it. You know? Like I'll give you an example. I ran into this dude when I was doing deliveries. You know, he's bald head, clean shave, all this other stuff. But he, he start talking to me about, because he did the same thing. And he start telling me how he operates. Well, I just go out there. I go on faith. I do this. I do that. I just, I say, you know, I just believe that the Most High is going to bless me with this and this amount of money. And I'm going to do this. And, and he's taking care of his family off of doing, off of doing deliveries uh, strictly, you know. And, I, and it, it was a lesson for me to learn something. Even though I'm in the truth, you know, the water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. I go out on the highways and byways, you know, once again, all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But he doesn't do any of that. He's not keeping the commandments. I'm pretty sure he probably eats pork. He was clean shaven. You know, he's completely bald. He, he drives delivery. He don't have to be completely bald, smooth, and shave his beard. He don't have to do those things. But as you can see, he's in a Gentile state of mind. But nevertheless, I could learn something from him. Just like this dude here. He ain't got no beard on his face. Whether he can grow one or not, I'm not sure. But the things that are the most high is allowing him to speak these things that can be lessons for brothers, you know. And so we have to remember, you know, the scriptures say this. You know. Uh, 
Romans 12 and 16. Be of the same. Uh, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. So sometimes we have to humble ourselves. We can't get to that moment where we feel like we too big to speak to a younger brother or, or, or to hear something that a younger brother may have to say because the most high uh, may be hopping on that younger brother and saying something that we need to listen to. You know, that is definitely a possibility of things happening. And I'm going to show that here in the scriptures through the uh, Lord willing, you know. So let's just close some of this stuff here to the right. You know, um, let's see. Yeah, I'll start at Job 32. Job 32 and 1. So these three men ceased to answer Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barachel, the, the Buzite of the kindred of Ram. Against Job, his wrath was, was his wrath kindled because he justified himself rather than the Most High. So yeah, Job was going through a lot of stuff, but in this particular uh, 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 in this particular situation, Job was justifying himself like as if he was without sin completely, as if he was, you know, you know, as if he was just uh, just completely, you know, justified in, 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 in just basically saying, you know, let's just read it, man. Also against his three friends was his wrath kindled because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Job. Now, Elihu had waited till Job had spoken. See, he took his time. He didn't make himself equal to him to them. Like it says in Ecclesiasticus, you know, when I be among great men, make not thyself equal. Let's, let's you know, get that open again. The serious look just like y'all got. The serious intense look. You know, let thy speech be short, comprehending much, and few words be as one in north and yet hold his tongue. He was holding his tongue because he knew he knew he knew that it wasn't right, but he was waiting on them. Like, uh, surely these men, these other great men next to him, gonna rebuke Job and tell him what he needed to hear. And he waited, and it never happened. And so he had to speak because there was need of him. He was a young man, but he had to step up and say. Look, man, you know, hey, so respectfully, hey, look, you know, respectfully, utmost respect. But this is what needs to be said, you know. Let thy speech be short, comprehending much in few words. Okay, verse 9, if thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. So he wasn't in the midst of their talk, you know, you know, he had respect. He wasn't like in the midst of their conversation. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. He was like, let me know, hey, look, man, I'm chilling. I'm chilling, bro. I'm not talking right now. Before thunder go off lightning. And before a shame-faced man shall go favor, you know. So, so let's let's continue. Now Elihu had waited till Job had spoken because they were elder than he. He was like, look, these are older men, they greater, and I'm a chill man. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. He was like, I can't believe these dudes ain't ain't got the words to speak to him right now, to to rebuke him, man. You know, you know, to or at least to show him that you know. The, the the right way according to the most high and much less rebuke not you know because it tells you not to rebuke an elder but there's nothing wrong with exhortation and maybe even a respectful correction if there's something that's wrong you know this there's nothing wrong with that and we have to be able to you know i'm not i'm a, I'm a babe but i'm you know if somebody even younger than me came in the truth and they corrected me and it was scriptural and and, and according to the truth then I have to humble myself enough to accept that. And the same goes for the men above me. You know, we have to, this thing is about humility. And if, and if we're being corrected according to the truth, we have to be able to accept that, you know, you know, respectfully, I say this, you know, I'm not, this is no, this is nothing puff up because knowledge puffeth up. You know, this is not a puffed up stance. This is truth. You know, and let's continue, you know, so like, yeah, I don't want to say too much. Then Elihu, the son of Barashel, the Buzzite answered and said, I am young and ye are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid. He had respect and durst not show you my opinion. I didn't want to step up and say nothing because y'all older than me. I didn't want to kindle y'all wrath. I didn't want to, you know, be disrespectful. So I didn't say nothing. You know, he didn't show his opinion. I said they should speak. Surely they'll have something to tell them. Surely they'll have the right words. And multitude of years should teach wisdom. They should be able to speak something to them. Verse eight, but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty giveth them understanding. So the most high put, put the spirit and he can put the spirit on, on a young man to speak words of wisdom as well. You know, let's continue. 
Therefore, I said, hearken, uh, great men are not always wise. Neither do the age understand judgment. Because so we all make mistakes. Sometimes, you know, it says that we're not always wise. You know, even and that goes for all of us. We all make mistakes. You know, we all make mistakes. And that's a part of understanding the uh, and being and understanding and being in the truth is that the men above you will make mistakes and you can't be harshly judging them because that can get you fucked up because you need to be forgiven you also have to forgive so if somebody that's as it's an apostle that you know the most high is dealing with them apostle elder whoever above you and they make a mistake you can't be all like oh that nigga you know get all bugged out oh, i'm gonna go start name they don't got the truth no nigga that's gonna get you fucked up man because you need to be forgiven so you have to be able to forgive because we are none of us are perfect, man. People make mistakes all the time, all the time. That's a, that's a part of the nature of this flesh, man. <sighs> you know, it's lucky. Let me continue, man. Great men are not always wise. Neither do the age understand judgment. Therefore, I said, hearken to me. I will also show mine opinion. Behold, I waited for your words. I gave ear to your reasons while she searched out what to say. Yea, I attended unto you, and behold, there was none of you that convinced Job or that answered his words. Lest ye should say, we have found out wisdom. God thrusts him down, not men. You know? The most high thrusts him down, not men. Uh, now he hath not directed his words against me, neither will I answer him with your speeches. They, they were amazed. They answered no more. They left off speaking. Well, what does young man got to say, you know? When I had waited, for they spake not, but stood still and answered no more. I said, I will answer also my part. I will also show mine opinion. For I am full of matter. The spirit within me constraineth me. Behold, my belly is as wine, which hath no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. You know, you, you, you might, there might be something you just know that just need to be. It just needs to be said. But it's like, look, man, let me just chill. You know, these are these are. Let me be respectful. These are men above me. You know, let me chill, man. I will speak that I may be refreshed because when you release that, you know, it's like a, it's like a sigh of relief, man. When you, when you finally express what you know through the spirit needs to be said, I will open my lips and answer. Let me not, I pray you accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering titles unto man, you know, because we're not supposed to be respected person. Now we, now we respect order. You know, we don't buck up, you know, because we have masters in this truth, you know, that are above us, you know, obey them that have the rule over you. So we don't get to this point of, oh, he ain't nothing. No, you can't, you know, that's for that to get you fucked up. But at the same time, you know, we can't. The, these people are not our saviors. They are who the Most High is dealing with. It is a, They are good examples to follow according to the scriptures, according to the truth. But we can't hold men to such a high esteem that we that we follow them blindly, you know. We're supposed to be like the Bereans studying the scripture, seeing whether these things are true or not. We can't just take what a person's saying, just, oh, yeah. It don't work like that, man. You know, it don't work like that. You got to prove it through the scriptures, through the spirit of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai. And you got to do it in humility or the most high can make you stumble and go the fuck off, man. This is a very, this is, this is truthfully a tight rope. This is truthfully that fire on the one side, deep water on the other side, because, man, if you take the wrong step, the most high will fuck you up. Will fuck you up, man. But you got to have balance, man. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Humbly, man. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering titles unto man, for I know not to give flattering titles. And so doing, my maker would soon take me away. You can't be putting people on such a high esteem, you know? Yes, we, double honor is worthy. But like I said, you can't just, you can't begin to, quote unquote, like worship men, and uh, to so to speak, you know? Like blindly following people. Even the apostles tell you, don't, hey, look, go, go read it for yourself. Go see for yourself what the scriptures say. But if you're not humble about it, then the most high can take the spirit of understanding away from you, then you won't get it, man. Job 33, wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches and hearken to all my words. So like, yeah, I'm saying a lot. Let me just continue. Behold, now I have opened my mouth. My tongue have spoken in my mouth. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The spirit of the most high hath made me, and the breath of the almighty have given me life. If thou canst answer me, set thy words in order before me, stand up. Behold, I am according to thy wish in the most high stead. 
I also am formed out of the clay. Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid. I'm just a man. Neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. I, I can't do nothing to you. Surely thou hast spoken in mine hearing, and I have heard the voice of thy words, saying, I am clean without transgression. Now, this is just, this is the particular situation that was going on. Job was like, hey, I ain't do nothing wrong. But, hey, we all know we have all fallen short. We have all come short of the glory of Yahweh. Shem Yahweh. All our righteousness is as filthy rags. The Most High just chose to, to, to justify Job. You know? Now, he said, I am clean without transgression. I am innocent. Neither is there iniquity in me. This, so this is what was in Job's heart. Verse 10, behold, he findeth occasions against me. He counteth me for his enemy. He putteth my feet in the stocks. This is all the things that, he, that Job was saying the most I have done to him. He marketh all my paths. Behold, in this thou art not just, I will answer thee. The most high, that the most high is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. For the most high speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth not. So hey, Job was basically, you know, <laughs> at, you know, uh, saying unto the to the to the potter, why am I thus? You know, can the can the pot say unto the to the he who formed it, why am I thus? And that's what that's what Job was saying. Why was I born? Why did you allow me to live this far if you was gonna do this to me, Lord? That's that. I mean that and he was, you know, the Most High didn't count it as him going off, but he was asking those type of questions. That's why Elihu said, why dost thou strive against him? You know, how can you ask him, why am I thus? Because he did great because he wanted to make you in this situation, man. You know, all you can do is just roll with it. Now, it was grievous. It was a very grievous situation. Granted. Anyway, continue. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. For the most high speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream and a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumberings upon the bed. He openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instructions that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Let's see here. Uh, let me go to verse 23. If there, so this is uh, Job 33 and 23. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand to show unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him and saith, deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return the days of the youth. Basically, if the Most High have chosen you, it's because he have, uh, what does he say? If there be a messenger, an interpreter, one among a thousand to show unto man his uprightness, uh, basically one of his prophets, then he is gracious unto him and saith, deliver him from going down to the pit. So he's saying, you know what? Hey, everybody's worthy of going to the pit, but I've chosen this man, so I'm not going to allow him to die. I'm going to forgive him of his sins. I have found a ransom. I'm going to I'm going to use I'm going to take him and, and, and I'm going to take him as a ransom for for the children of Israel. Since I have found this prophet, you know, at this particular moment, I'm going to use him to save my people. And he's done that over and over. And the ultimate uh, ransom was Yahweh Shai, man. You know, his flesh shall be fresher than a child. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto the most high and he will be favorable unto him. And he shall see his faith with joy for he will render unto man his righteousness. He looketh upon men and say, if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right and profited and it profited me not, he would deliver his soul from going into the pit and his life shall see the light. So if you say unto the most high, I have sinned, Lord, only before you have I sinned, Lord, please forgive me. Then the most high will grant repentance if you do it in sincerity, if you truly repent, you know, if you look upon men and say, if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which is right and it profited me not, he would deliver his soul from going into the pit. The most high is gracious. And he will in his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things worketh the most high oftentimes with man to bring back his soul from the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. Mark O oh well, mark well, O oh Job, hearken unto me, hold thy peace, and I will speak. If thou hast anything to say, answer me, speak, for I desire to justify thee. If not, hearken unto me, hold thy peace, and I shall teach thee wisdom. How is this young man teaching him wisdom? Because the Most High put the spirit on this young man to be able to do such. Humbly, the young man admitted. The young man came and said, look, man, I, I held my peace because y'all older than me. You know, I was having respect unto you, to the things y'all was saying. You know, but the Most High put this in. I, I can't hold this in no more. I need to tell you these things. Respectfully. And, 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 and when, some, when a young man comes respectfully, and, and, you know, we need to all have that, that, 
condescend to men of low estate. We need to be able to receive that if it's through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh you know. Furthermore, Elihu, Elihu answered and said, Hear all my words, O ye wise men, and give ear unto me, ye that have knowledge. For the ear trieth words, as the mouth tasteth meat. Let, let, let us choose to us judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. For Job have said, I am righteous, and God have taken away my judgment. Should I lie against my right? My wound is incurable without transgression. You know, so he's saying my wound is incurable, and I didn't do nothing. What man is like Job, who drinketh up scorning like water? See, Job was taking it like a champ, man, which goeth in company with the workers of iniquity and walketh with wicked men. For he saith, it profiteth a man nothing that he should delight himself with the Most High. All right. Therefore, hearken unto me, ye men of understanding, be it far from the Most High that he should do wickedness, and, from, and far from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. You know, I just put that far from in there because that's what he's saying. That's why that semicolon is right there. You know, be it far from the God that he should do wickedness and from the almighty that he should commit iniquity. So he's, he's saying it's both of these things are far from the most high. Verse 11, for the work of man shall he render unto him. Hey, that's what the scriptures say. He shall render unto every man as his work shall be, right? And, and, and cause every man to find according to his ways. Yea, surely the most high will not do wickedly, neither will the almighty pervert judgment. Who have given him a charge over the earth or who have disposed the whole world base you can't who have who gave the most high charge ain't nobody give him the charge over the world he is the creator he he created everything <laughs> so basically it's just asking a hypothetical question who gave the most high power and you know the answer is nobody he, he, he he's the creator you know he had the power from the beginning if he set his heart upon man if he gathered unto himself his spirit and his breath all flesh shall perish together and man shall turn again unto dust. If he was to withdraw his spirit, everything would be kaput. Plants, animals, men, everything would die. Because as you can see, plants move, they grow, they have a spirit as well, man. You know? If now thou hast understanding, hear this. Hearken to the voice of my words. Shall even he that hateth right govern? And wilt thou condemn him that is most just? You know? Can't condemn the most high, he is the most just. Is it fit to say to a king, Thou art wicked, and to princes, ye are ungodly? How much less to him that accepteth not the persons of princes, nor regardeth the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hands. And there's a lot more, you know. I'm not gonna read all of this. So lucky, I know this is going on long, so I'm gonna just, you know, you can keep reading as you see, man. You know, the most high put the spirit on this man. And to 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 for lack of a better word show job the error of his ways verse 34 let men of understanding tell me and let a wise man hearken unto me job have spoken without knowledge and his words were without wisdom my desire is that job may be tried unto the end because of his answers for wicked men for he added rebellion unto his sin he clappeth his hands among us and multiplieth his words against the most high you know so basically you know he was, um, hey amen. And I will show thee that I have yet to speak on God's behalf. You know, hey amen. Elihu was, Elihu, Elihu was going in, you know. Let me see here. I know the Most High came and said, see, and the Most High didn't come and say, it didn't seem now. Let me just go to the bottom and make sure. Yeah, see, Elihu was still talking all the way to the end, it looks like. You know? And then, then the Most High came, and then, and then Yahweh answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I would demand of thee, and answer thou me. So then the Most High came and got on Job. He wasn't coming and getting on Elihu. He was coming and getting on Job. You know, keep reading. And you'll see that. You no. Know? He was asking him all these questions like, man, who who are you to come, you know, to say these different things, man? You speaking without knowledge, Job. Were you around when I did all these things? Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer. Then Job finally spoke. 
So, you know, it was perceived that the Most High that Job was 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 uh, reproving him. That Job was reproving the Most High. Dang, Lord, you should have just let me die, Lord. You know? But the Most High still didn't count that as sin towards Job. He forgave him for those words, and he, and he restored him. But the point of the story is, you know, let's just read the scripture, man. And, you know, I'm going to let that be the end of it. 1 Corinthians 12. You know? Because... You can't discount the, the smallest members, man. You can't discount the lowest members as if they have no worth. You know, sometimes a younger brother can come with truth, according to the scriptures, that can that can teach older brothers something as well. You know, now it's all about humility, but humility has to go across the board for the older brother to be to accept when the truth is coming out according to the scriptures and for the younger brother to know his place and his time when to be able to say these different things. All right. First Corinthians 12 and 12 for as the body is one and have many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Hamashiach for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles, Gentiles meaning Israelite foreigners, Israelites who were in a Gentile state of mind and converted back to their true nationality and their true heritage. Whether we be bond or free and have uh, been made all and have been all made to drink into one spirit. We all had the spirit of the most high. Now, we don't want to be like those niggas, Dathan, Abraham and Corey, who came up and rose up against Moses. Are we not all holy? You take too much to yourself. Now, nah, fuck that, man. The most high set up who you want to set up. And it's all for a reason, man. The most I have set up uh uh Yahweh Shai with many stumbling blocks to trip people up, and the most I set up his men with many stumbling blocks to trip people up, man. There's 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 imperfections by design for you to for you to despise people and look upon those imperfections to say these niggas ain't the men of the Lord, and that's when the most I put that reprobate spirit on your ass, nigga. And all have been made to drink into one spirit. So, yes, we all have the spirit of the Most High. And sometimes the Most High can hop on the younger brother and have him speak wisdom. As as we saw uh, with Elihu, whatever, however you pronounce his name. 14. The body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not the body. Is it therefore not of the body? So don't discredit yourself, you know. And let's just get that scripture here. All of this comes with respect, though. Everything comes with respect, man. 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. So don't let nobody despise your youth, but take everything with balance, with a grain of salt. You know? Take, take everything with balance and with a grain of salt. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them for doing this thou, thou mayest. Thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So you got to take heed to yourself. Don't don't rise up and, 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 and get proudful. You know, knowledge puffeth up. He that exalted himself shall be abased. He that he that humble himself shall be exalted, man. You know, we all got to come as, as little children into this thing, man. You know, and little children in their purest sense are not prideful. You know. Let's continue. So like I said, if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Don't, don't, don't downplay that the most high has chosen you. Be humbly, uh, humbly accept the gifts that he's given you and continue to stay humble and, and pray that he increase you and, and, you know, pray for wisdom and knowledge. Verse 16, and if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole we're hearing where were the smelling we all have a role to play we all help now, all of these things are important they all have something that they can contribute but now have the most high set the members every one of them in the body 
as it have pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? If they was all the same, where would the body be at? But now are they many members, but yet, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. You know, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but the Most High have tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of the anointed and members in particular. And of course, you know, covered the prophesy. There's different gifts, you know, and things of that nature, you know. But the point I'm trying to make is all of the body rightly fit together. You know, all of if the if the most high is dealing with a with a with a young man and you see it, you know, you hear it through the scriptures, don't despise that person's youth. Don't despise that person. Don't act like there's nothing that they have to offer. Of course, you know, you have to try uh, try a friend. You have to try a man to see whether he be a friend or not. This, that, and the other. But if the person's coming out scripturally according to the truth, then you, you have to also acknowledge that that person may have something to offer. And, you know, it's just all through the spirit, man. We all, us older brothers can learn from, learn from younger brothers. And, of course, younger brothers can learn from older brothers. Iron sharpened iron. You know, let's just let's just end with that. Okay. Proverbs twenty seven and seventeen. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. You know. And I can definitely attest to the fact that I have learned things from younger brothers. And there may even be things that I have to offer through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that older brothers can learn from. And it's not, you know, it's all through the spirit. It's all through the spirit. No, because we have to, we have to remember, man, knowledge puff it up. Exalting yourself gets you fucked up. Okay. As long as you establish that and you don't get out of, out of pocket, then the most high may continue to deal with you. I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, Rakakadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, love, and salutations to the hopefully elect. Hopefully this lesson was edifying. And that you brothers were edified, were edified as I was. Alright, with that I'm going to say Shalom.